the tenth Lodge Sims tour, and today we're going to be doing Ram. Ram is, even by the maker of uh, Lodge Sim, is the most complex thing in all of Lodge Sim. So let's get one out. You may notice it looks exactly like the the ROM, but it has a few more uh, bits and bobs on the side. But one thing we want to change to make this much easier is under data interface we'll change this to separate load and store and then you'll find the D. So now we don't have to have this now we have separate load and store as the name suggests. So when we uh, want to set something one of these things doesn't have to be on. But this is just how I've learned how to do it. So our address we're going to use the setup we did in episode 8 with the counter and this is going to be there and the counter is going to be on a uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use a controlled buffer that's facing north there and this is going to be to make sure that the clock is only on when necessary so if we find the clock there it is and I'll be facing north but this won't be able to get through because well, I just can't so this we're going to make it so that it will stay at value and as before it doesn't lose that until you go on it again it's fine and the way we're going to determine is if we want clock, uh, clocks to be on or not so we're going to have another pin here which is going to be a one bit pin this will allow make it so that it won't be able to get through if it doesn't want it to and this would also update the pin so this is the address and no that's not what I want to do at all and the data will be printed out yet again to a TTY a really ugly one go Self just don't like that. I was going to make it big as we learned last time. We need it to be bigger. It's going to be 32. That is quite big. But it should be big enough. So this will go down to here. Oops. This is going to be a 7 uh, for the data width, there'll be 7 bit. And this will also only be updated when clock pulse is allowed to be pulsed. So you may be wondering about how we're going to set all the RAM. So, but I think we're going to do that with a random number generator. Or whatever they're called. The thingy. So that should be under memory. And there you go. Are we going to put the random number generator? There. A 7 bit random number generator. And uh, uh, it'll always be have new numbers. We won't have to have uh, that. So when we turn this bit on, what should happen is it will begin setting all of these numbers. And actually, I think what I'm going to do is make another control buffer here so that we we don't have to like update the screen until we set all of our bam. So let's make it east. And that will connect to there and that will connect to there. No that won't actually it won't connect to there. It will connect to here. like so and this one will connect to here so now what we've done is we've made it so it won't always pulse so now when we turn this on hopefully what will happen is it will count up each time it's pulsed and each time it's pulsed it actually to set it we're also going to need it to like attach to there so now it will also update the trigger it will update so each now it, every time it gets a pulse from this it will 
set our address, which is here, to the number in the random number generator. So now we turn it on. It's giving us a random number for each number. It's working perfectly, which is unlike what I normally do. So once it fills up each number and gets to um, EF, I believe. Or, no, it wasn't EF, or something else, whatever it is. Or it'll stop at the loop anyway, so it should be okay. Now it's numbers are going up, it's setting each number it can. And then we'll, we'll close this one and open this one. And we'll be finished there. Still scrolling through numbers, it's quite a lot in the 7 bit number. Goes all the way up to 127. There we go, so now we've got to FC, we're finished. Or FF, or whatever. Because it's actually, oh yeah, it's 8 bit, so it would get up to FF. Now you can stop this. So now it's not updating this anymore, and we open this. Okay, that was a bit silly of me. So I think what we're going to do instead, now I've been a bit of an idiot, we're going to use an OR gate here, because we also want it to scroll through all of the different ones, uh, even though it's not going at the moment. So I'm also going to attach that there. So now if either of these are on, one or the other, or both, it will go. And well, it won't now because it's not neither of them are on. But what we're also going to do is put a button. It's getting quite complex now. But I'll explain it all at the end. Like a button facing south here to reset it. So we are going to reset it. And so now it's at the beginning again. I'm going to open. Uh, we're going to open this one. That's not working either. So, for now, I think we're just going to get rid of this because it doesn't seem to be working. Just, just a small hinder, hindrance. And now it should be working. Yeah, there we go. So now it's scrolling through all of the letters it just created. Which is really cool, I think. Now it's, because it's just gone through, we've just written all of our letters, and now it's scrolling through them and then printing them to the screen. Let's see how, because how, all our letters, it's 8 bits, so it's 250, 255 letters. 256 letters, including the 00, zero letter. Well, it would have done more at the beginning, but that's only because Nick did a bit of a mistake. Oh, there's a clear screen one. <laughs> oh, clear again. I think one of these must be like to clear, it, but I don't know any ASCII number like that. that I've heard of at least. You can make some quite funny things with random. Oh, it's finished now. Now it's just going to carry on printing E. Let's stop that. Let's just control K. Stop them moving. So let's exp go through this. So what we're doing is now at at foot it doesn't really work that well. But each clock pulse, if this one's on, it will up like it will allow the random number generator to set a new number because. When this is on, it, it updates what this number is going to be to what's in the data. So when this is on, what it will do is update. But at the moment, it's not completely working because I could have made it work eventually, but it took too much time because you still need to counter to count through them. So every time this pulses, it'll also go to the next number in the counter and 
that every time it goes to the next number in the counter, it simultaneously picks a new random number and that goes to the data and at the same time the clock is triggered. So all those things have the, the clock, the data, the random number generator and the update all happen at the same time. So we have our uh, uh, our it's got it's gone to the cell number of the clock. So at the moment we're at FF, and it's also and that cell number is uh, clocked. So it's set as the data, which is the random number. So by doing this, we are setting each random number, then going to the next one and setting it many many times. Now when this is this one's this one's on, it goes through all of the random. First we have to clear it. And then it goes through all of the random numbers again, and each time it's updating the screen to the data out, which is this one. This outputs data from the ra the RAM, and then outputs it to the the screen, and then updates it at the same time. So this is what this contraption is basically doing. RAM is quite com very complex, but can be used, and there's some pretty cool stuff of what people have done on YouTube with RAM. Although I've ne whenever I've tried to implement my stuff with RAM, it's not really worked because I'm not a computer physicist or something. So this is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and goodbye.